Jojo Pune is the reason that you should be excited about North American League of Legends. Inspired's looking for Bjergsen here in mid lane. Charm's not going to find anything. Flash coming out from Bjerg, but it's Jojo Pune underneath the tier one for first blood. You tweeted something um, after the Team Liquid game. Do you do you remember what it was? Yeah, I think it was like, this is the go. This is your go. I don't remember. And exactly. I was surprised, you know, because like when I first versed him, I thought. You know, he would just do more stuff, but he just didn't do much. BG will begin their new reign. It is the fastest finals ever, and it never felt this good to be bad. I think we're going to shit on you, but we'll have to see it. He's the LCS's newest 17-year-old superstar. A trash-talking mid lane sensation who, in just three short years, went from stream sniping Tifu to beating Faker on one of League's biggest international stages. And he's just getting started. They're just gonna burn it. Oh, Elias is so broken at doing this. Unless. Oh, he's Unless. Oh, he's going for it! Oh, oh, he Jojo! gets it! No fing way, dude! That was a good early flash from Contra. Oh my goodness, he's such a beast. Jojo Pune's in there, he's gonna get first blood. That's a solo kill at the end of it all. Evil geniuses will tie T1 in the standings. Hey folks, before we get into the video, I wanna ask you to please sub to the channel and turn on notifications if you haven't done it yet because every sub really does help. Okay, so if you hadn't heard of Jojo Pune until like six months ago, you're not alone. See, before he became the trash-talking mid lane prodigy terrorizing League of Legends, Jojo was the furthest thing from what most diehard esports fans care about. He was a Fortnite player. That's right, way back in 2019, when Doublelift and Bjergsen were still fighting over LCS trophies and drowning in groups at Worlds, Jojo wasn't on the Rift at all. No, like most 14-year-olds, he was spending every waking second grinding Fortnite. But unlike most 14-year-olds, he was absolutely cracked. G -g -g. That was Jojo's breakout moment. The time he stream sniped Tifu, one of the biggest names in Fortnite, and absolutely destroyed him. He won't put me no, dude. G -g. I f***ed on my 90s every single time. In fact, Tifu was so impressed by Jojo that he invited him to a custom lobby so they could 1v1. Is this him? Fake Jojo Pyan? I don't even know what the f*** is. Yo! Yo, what up, dude? Bro, you're f***ing god. Bro, why are you stream sniping, dude? What the heck, man? <laughs> Yo, I'll see All you. Alright, dude. dude. It was fun playing with you, man. GG, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, dog. From that point on, Jojo became known as a mechanical god, good enough to rub shoulders with some of Fortnite's biggest names. When he beat Tifu in Fortnite, that's when everyone was kind of like, maybe he does have potential. By the fall, Jojo was trying his luck in the competitive circuit, putting up promising results in Cash Cups and FCS Weeklies. And I wouldn't say I went like pro, because I always just did as a hobby, you know? Um, I never really tried going pro now, I was just playing tournaments and stuff. But Jojo wanted esports to be his career. So he set his sights on something a little more stable than Fortnite. I felt like in League, um, it was much more stable and it's just better competitively. So that's like the main reason I switched. Within just one year of playing League, Jojo Pune was already dunking on pros. He was a solo queue prodigy. Not only was he shitting on some of North America's highest ranked players, he was showing zero respect while he did it. The man, this guy doesn't care, man. He's got a big ego. He's got a big cack, if you know what I mean. But yeah, he just... I'll, I'll tell you this, he plays very cocky. In September 2020, Jojo signed with his first amateur competitive team, Noble Esports. He left to stand in as a substitute for Zenith Esports before catching the attention of the LCS's newest, scrappiest title contender, Evil Geniuses. AG scouting was basically, they just saw me in solo queue and they just saw I was high rank and then they just messaged me. Obviously he has incredibly strong mechanics, um, comes from his history of Fortnite obviously. EG picked up Jojo to play for their Academy roster, and even though he finished dead last in the LCS Academy spring season, EG turned on the Jets to finish top four at Proving Grounds. 
And that's when EG gave Jojo his real shot. Just seven months after joining EG's academy roster, Jojo was promoted to the org's LCS lineup. He was catapulted into the spotlight as one of the players to watch. Jojo Pian is more of a lane dominant player who wants to really assert himself in the early levels. Throughout his year in academy, Jojo posted good laning numbers capped by some incredible stats during the Spring Proving Grounds tournament. When you watch him, you can see his explosiveness and his potential to snowball matchups. And yet, despite Jojo's obvious mechanical brilliance, a lot of people thought that this was a risky move. Why? His play style. If I could have a, a variance rating higher than high, maybe extreme, I might apply that to Jojo because just the way he plays is so wild and aggressive, which I, I kind of love. He is not afraid to take a risk to make a play. He's dropping 50%. Full figure on the ward, goes for the charm, goes for the jump in the back line, package of the top as well. Is it a kill is the question. Corgi is down one for nothing. Flip over the wall, goes for Jojo, going to flash the safety, stays alive, knocked into the air, not dead just yet. Find the winter to back, but it's three versus one. TL's down to a single member. Whippo may be wide, but the team has already fallen off his back. Evil geniuses take the Bud Light Ace. They're going to take the Dragon Soul, and they're going to take control of this game. Beautiful force from the evil geniuses. Coin flippy, all or nothing, feast or famine, whatever you want to call it, Jojo was wildly aggressive. He was a ranked demon through and through. If he popped off in the opening minutes of a game, it seemed like he could win it single-handedly. They're just gonna burn it. Oh. Aphelios is so broken at doing this. Unless... Oh, he's Unless... Oh, he's going by! Oh, oh he Jojo! gets it! No f***ing way, dude! But if he failed to find that extra gear, EG could find themselves dead in the water. The Infinity Edge in inventory. Turret falls again. No longer a fight possible. Yoji Pyong gonna go back in, has the ulti dunks run right back in. Hasama gets to safety though, can't get the damage just yet with the ulti on, but tries the frontline impact, will likely fall and does. One for zero, second one drops, Danny. Jojo Point is down, a dunk in the back line, a go for some time, but it's just not gonna matter. The back line will not die, only a Lulu falls, and Hansama is back in action. But that wasn't the only thing making the stakes pretty high for Jojo. See, despite being a rookie player in his first ever pro split, Jojo developed a reputation for talking a lot of trash. You tweeted something um, after the Team Liquid game. Do you do you remember what it was? Um, yeah, I think it was like this is the go. This is your go. I don't remember. Something it was like about that. Bjerg. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was surprised, you know, because like when I first versed him, I thought, you know, he would just do more stuff, but he just didn't do much. So. Over the course of the season, Jojo talked shit whenever he got a chance. On Twitter, in post-game interviews, wherever. He was making it clear to the scene that he didn't really care about the LCS's tradition or decorum. He just wanted everyone to know he was the best. And yet, despite all of his bravado and EG's second place finish in the lock-in tournament, Jojo's first ever LCS split was pretty much a coin flip. EG finished the season 9-9, nine and nine, barely making it into the playoffs winner's bracket. And for all of JoJo's trash talk, there wasn't much of a reason to believe this roster could go all the way. EG were up against Liquid, a team of veterans and imports that basically represented what the LCS had become. Just about every team decided that there was no room for rookies if they wanted to compete internationally and win. It's gonna be interesting. If there's gonna be somebody that's gonna push him, I feel like it's gonna be JoJo's. He's going to take it to you. Highest four percentage. He's looking to create that yes. advantage. Yes. But can he do it against the likes of Bjergsen? And Liquid quickly showed EG why signing a player like JoJo was such a huge risk. Danny respawns in a moment, but a moment is a bit too long. Nexus turret's gone. Team Liquid takes the win and moves on in the winner's bracket. Down but not out, EG entered the loser's bracket as hopefuls with an axe to grind. For years, North American League had been recycling the same recognizable faces and bringing in the same high-profile imports. No one truly believed that JoJo could just magically change that. No one except for JoJo. Um, if the team can develop any talent properly, then I think um, they can really work well, which happened in EG. Um, so I think it more depends on the team's development more than um, the player itself, I would say. If you put them with the right players in the right environment, um, I think a lot of times they'll thrive. Johnson's dead now. Takui is gone. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. It's done. Evil geniuses win the series 3-1. EG, move on.
on to their date with Cloud9. Game by game, series by series, tweet by tweet, Evil Genius's loudmouth lineup steamrolled their way through everyone. One little fish in a very, very big pile. Jojo, you were looking really good throughout. Player of the series, in oh, fact. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. I know you had some words with Fudge going into this. Were you threatened at all by him based on his last performance? I mean, I never, like, how can I say? Let me think. Hmm. Like, I don't think Fudge is that good at mid, but he beat me every oh. single game. So I couldn't talk much trash because I'm like 0-3 against him in regular season, so I couldn't talk much. But now that we 3 0 him, um, I think I can say now that I think he's not that good, so, and I'm pretty confident now, so there we go. EG transformed in the playoffs. They were hitting heights most orgs spent years trying and failing to reach. Their lower bracket run wasn't just miraculous, it looked like they were doing the impossible. 2v5 is possible. I mean, you're not going to stop the Baron, but you might get a team fight. He's going to shoot. What? You're kidding me! Centaurin! Geniuses went all in on young North American talent, and they have been rewarded so heavily. What a crazy success story. Some land. As they're pushing in, they have the Ocean Soul to go full. A bit more, a hook, a core chain, chain, death, and evil geniuses will just slaughter everyone. A 3-0 victory. The clutch gene belongs to the young guns of EG. They will crush Team Liquid, and EG will head to their first ever LCS final. Danny, go first. How do you think that's going to go? I really think we are going to 3-0 them, because I think they're not that good. Having stomped and shit-talked his way to the grand finals of his very first split, JoJo basically upended the LCS. At first, people were reluctant to believe in this kid. Now, they'd be crazy not to. I want to reiterate how mixed the reaction to JoJo getting a starting spot was, right? Because of the other talent available that already been LCS proven, proven elsewhere in other regions as well. Uh, when JoJo's announcement came through, everyone was like, some people were like, yes, any talent, but a lot of it was like, nah, I don't know about that. Or even a positive spin was like, well, they're taking a big risk. There's kids here. There's like 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. And you can look at Jojo Pyun and be like, that guy's doing it right now. The last time was 10 years ago, but this is not something that's impossible. And I think he can be this young superstar that people aspire to be. And I want to stress how important that is in our ecosystem, just the state of it right now, to have young guns that people are investing in and are carrying them all the way up to the championship. But going into the grand finals, most people didn't believe Jojo could do it. So I stick by 100 Thieves, three and one. Three and one vote for the defending champions in 100 Thieves. I stayed strong. Oh! Oh! Three, two. Oh! Uh, but I, wow. Yeah, I, I'm not very confident, to be honest. Okay. And after watching EG. Woo! The crowds are turning on us. I know, I know, oh, oh no. They're, they're gonna be disappointed in me. Oh no! But, uh, <laughs> Three, two, uh, yeah, 100. Another oh, three, two prediction oh, for 100 oh, God. Jet, Jet. Jet. I'm going to switch to Ichi right now. Okay. I'm switching. So Jet's going with the I crap. did not expect this. But JoJo was about to prove all the non believers dead wrong. 100 Thieves tries to get impact and someday is going to take them. But what else can they find? It doesn't look like a lot as Closer and Someday are in the back part of the Herald pit. Inspire and Vulcan, very low on HP, and he's going to be stolen by Inspired and the evil geniuses as 100 Thieves fall back into the enemy jungle. How do EG keep winning all of these neutral objective fights? Oh, oh he's Closer in there! Two. He's ready to go! You clean up a neutral objective off that, you take a Baron for yourselves, all of a sudden that swing can make something happen. But EG are just playing with supreme confidence, are playing like such a cohesive unit. Individual mistakes don't seem to matter. Evil geniuses marching all over Summoner's Rift. Remember the timer that Isaac said, 29-18. If EG wins this in the next seven minutes, fastest finals Ever. We are on the precipice of a new era in the LCS. 
the new talents, the North American talent built up on evil geniuses. There's one thing left for them to do, and it's destroy this Nexus. It is the fastest finals ever, and it never felt this good to be bad. Evil geniuses are your new LCS champions. Houston, give it up for your homegrown NA talent. It's JoJo and Danny! I don't want to hear another f***ing excuse from teams. Everyone said I got one. She gets one. From NA teams that say that they cannot bring up their academy mid laners. But JoJo's Cinderella story didn't end there. Now, it was time to go global. Where's your mind at? What are you thinking? I mean, I saw the MSI bracket. We're against EU, so... I mean, I think we're gonna shit on EU, but we'll have to see it. Going into MSI, the question everyone was asking was, would EG end up like every other NA roster at an international event and fail, or could these teenagers really topple kings? Going into this tournament, uh, Jojo Poon especially was like <laughs> saying a lot of like, uh, uh, I guess what is it called? Like, I guess trash talk or, or yeah, what He was talking it? shit. We could say talking yeah. shit. <laughs> Okay, so he was talking shit. It's time to get on the Evil Geniuses bandwagon early because, hey, you could say I told you so when they win MSI. And while it's fair to say that JoJo didn't quite shit on Europe, he did do something arguably more impressive. He traded blows with Faker and won. They're gonna push straight through the T1 base. Only Faker stands between them and the win. 20 seconds on respawn. That's at least inhibitor. Next will be a close call. JoJo walks up. JoJo gets the taunt. And they're gonna buy a second or two. But Faker will always die there. The last two turrets, evil geniuses, will tie T1 in the standings. Four and three with one and one head to head. Evil geniuses finally get their first win over a pool one team. After swinging even records in both the group and rumble stages of MSI, EG secured a quarterfinals face-off against Chinese juggernaut Royal Never Give Up. And while they did end up losing pretty decisively, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. JoJo and the rest of EG already exceeded every expectation imaginable. They were a rookie roster that reinvigorated the North American scene in a way that no one expected them to. At just 17 years old, JoJo Pune has already won an LCS trophy and earned a top 4 finish at MSI. In 3 short months, he's accomplished more internationally than some so-called superstars have in almost a decade. I'm definitely proud of the North American representatives, evil geniuses. Yep, the question is, how much will they grow over time? JoJo has given NA League fans hope for the first time in what feels like forever. And he did it by thumbing his nose at what came before. By being a trash-talking ex-Fortnite pro who didn't ask for permission or forgiveness before becoming a superstar. He did it by just waking up one day and saying, why not me? It's not really that much of a change. I've just been always trying to focus on getting better. So I guess it's just that. Um, Otherwise, I mean, we've gained much more attention and we've got much more fans, so I'm grateful for that too. Um, but I don't really notice too much of a difference, honestly, like lifestyle-wise or anything, but um, I just try focusing on the same things. I won't let you guys down because, you know, I never disappoint, so yeah. People think that the person on camera made the whole video. I didn't write this. I'm not video editing this, but the video editors are the real heroes because they have to look at my face and listen to my voice and, and listen to all the weird noises I make for two weeks and then a video comes out and then no one recognizes them. So they're the real heroes here for listening to the weird burp I made between takes.